Hey guys, it's Jim. What's up? Hope you're doing well. Uh, I've been playing a lot with Aurora HDR 2018, as you probably know. And uh, I thought I'd walk through a photo, just do an edit here. It's not going to take a long time, I don't think. And I just kind of want to walk through and talk about some of the new features. There's a lot of cool stuff. I've been playing with pretty much all of it. And I uh, thought I'd share it. So here we go. Uh, this is a Route 66 photo that I took. You can see the, the base tone mapping, I think, looks very natural. Uh, that's the middle exposure from the bracket set. This is the base tone mapped image. Uh, it is a little brighter, so I'm going to fix some of that, and I'm going to do a few other things and just kind of walk through some of the tools. So if you haven't um, seen my previous video, I talk a little bit about lens correction and transform. I think it's a huge addition, and I absolutely love it, so I'm going to apply those here. That's the lens correction and transform. They're really cool. I just got to uh, focus on what I'm doing here and make sure I don't screw it up because I screw up a lot. And I think uh, something like, like that looks pretty good. So let me show you the before and after. That's kind of the power of this product. There's the before, there's the after. So as you can see, I've, uh, I've basically brought the sign and the car closer in the frame uh, without cropping, right? I could still crop if I wanted to, but I just wanted to sort of make them a little bit more prominent, although it's a big neon sign in an old car. It's kind of hard not to notice uh, in this photo. But that's what I would do. And by the way, I always start with lens correction and transform if I'm going to do them. I like to do that first. Get the photo looking, you know, right in terms of uh, the balance of those sort of things before I start uh, kind of jacking around with it. So now I'm going to jack around with it. So I'm going to cool it off a little bit. I'm going to do a little tint here. And I'm kind of riffing, so I'm not sure exactly how all this is going to go. But I'm kind of winging it. And uh, it makes it fun, right? So let's see here. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. I think the color's a little too saturated. <laughs> I actually said that. Um, I love my colors, but I don't want to overdo it too much. I might give it a little pop of vibrance, but take the saturation down. And I do that sometimes. Much like I, I play temperature and tint off of each other, I do saturation and vibrance the same sort of way. I'm going to stick a little structure on this thing just to give it a little bit of grunge because hey we're talking about neon signs we're talking about a impending storm here and of course we're talking about uh, route 66 so grunge is kind of the word uh, image radiance I love this slider this is a new uh, sorry it's not new there's an update to it it creates a lot of shadow and now there's a shadow slider so I can just go like this I don't want to go all the way but I can go like that just to overcome some of the shadow that's created by image radiance so I think that looks good, and I think I'll add a little glow to the neon sign. See how that works? Let me show you that. There's the glow before or after, and there it is before. So I'm just going to give it a little bit just to kind of make that neon pop a little bit more. It's like a beacon in the storm, right? Exciting. Okay, um, and Dodge and Burn. So this is a new filter, and it's super awesome. I've been using it on probably not every image. That'd be a lie, but on like 97 0.4% of them, a whole lot of them. So you just click Start Painting, and you can choose Lighten or Darken. If you hit your X key, that'll change between Lighten and Darken. I want to go Darken, so by the way, you notice the minus sign in the middle of that circle. If I hit X and go back to Lighten, you'll notice a plus sign. So plus is adding light, minus is taking light away. So I want to take it away, and you can just drag the strength to whatever you want. It defaults to 50. I actually want to go at about 25. And all I'm going to do is just darken some of this foreground here because I like the look of it. Um, you know, it's a little grungy and stuff, but it's a little bit too bright. So very rough masking job, and uh, I'm done, though. So I'm just going to say done. Let me show you what that did. There's, there's the before, and there's the after. Just darken it up a little bit more moody, right? That's kind of the look I'm going for. And, and that's probably about it. What I would normally do is add a new adjustment layer, get some denoise, stick that in the sky, but that's just a personal preference. I just like smooth, kind of dreamy looking skies. So there's kind of that look. Grab the brush. And by the way, um, once you choose brush, that's where you'll find the radial mask and the gradient mask in this version. Now I'm just using the brush, but if you were going to do something across an entire sky with kind of a flat horizon, I'd use the gradient mask, for example. If you wanted to create some uh, circular kind of feature, I'd use the radial mask, right? But brush it is for this one, and I'm going to do paint, and I want 100% opacity, so I'm just going to wipe that across the sky. Again, I'm not doing a very fine job of masking. I'm kind of playing around, and there's a spot. Um, 
still use Luminar or you could use Snap Heal for that. Uh, there's not a spot removal tool in Aurora and uh, I need to remove a spot, but you know, that's okay, not a problem. I can check out my mask by clicking there. Totally missed a spot. I always do. Um, that's close enough, really. So I would just say done. Now, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but there's the before. Uh, there it is, a little bit grainier in the sky, which I don't really like. And after, right, a little softer in the sky. Again, I got a spot, which by the way, it's less visible when you wipe noise reduction across uh, spots, they tend to become less visible, right? But it doesn't take it away, so it's not a substitute for uh, for correcting that. Uh, but that's what I would do on this layer, and in fact, I'll just close all these guys. Uh, yeah, that's it, just this denoise, and really I'm done. So let me show you the before and after. All right, so there it is. You can see it's a little bit further set back in the frame. And by the way, let's just look at the stats. If you click on the eye, you can get information. Three exposures, 32 millimeters. So it's sort of set back a little bit, and uh, I wanted to uh, to bring it forward, and so that's what the lens correction and the transform allowed me to do, right? You can see it really pops the sign in the car more prominently into the photo, which is what I was going for. And then you saw all my other adjustments using new things like HDR Enhance, which replaces clarity, uh, Dodge and Burn, which is new, things like that. But that's a quick edit, just a quick demo of how it works. I'll be back with more videos. I got a lot of stuff planned. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you want to get a copy of Aurora HDR, I'll put a link down there. There's a pre-order going on right now, and it goes until September 28th. And I'll also include down there a link to my blog where I've got an article about all the new features. You can check it out. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks again. See you next time. And adios, friends.